What's up guys, here's Shahin. Hello and welcome to my new Photoshop tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to create a text effect based on the film logo of Iron Man 3. Right, let's start. First we open our Photoshop and create a new document by pressing Command N or Strike N. Or just go up here to File and click New. All right, and let's choose simple values for the dimensions like 800 pixels width. 600 pixels height, and the other settings are okay like that, 72 resolution, RGB color mode, and white background. All right, let's click create. Now we have our document, and before we create our text layer, let's add a nice background. And to do that, we create a fill in an adjustment layer down here, and choose gradient. All right, now we click here to choose our colors, Click the first one here. The black color here is right. This is one of the colors we need. And the other one should be red, not white. Let's click here and choose a dark red. All right, maybe I'm a, maybe a bit darker. Okay. All right, click OK. All right, that's good and click OK. But we want the red color on the bottom, on the bottom side of the document. So let's click here, reverse. Yeah, there you go. And click dither to make a smooth gradient. All right, and confirm. All right, and now we, we don't need this background color anymore, so let's delete it. Yeah, and click here. All right, and let's lock this layer now. Okay, so it makes the workflow easier. And now let's create the text layer by using the text tool here. And as a font, I choose, of course, Iron Man of War 2 and ZV regular. And the text size, let's choose 350 points. And text color, red. There you go, and click. And now let's click here on the left area of the document here and write irony. All right, confirm. And now let's center this text layer by selecting the entire document by pressing Command A or Strike A or just go up here to select and click all, all right? And then choose the move tool and align it horizontal by click here and vertical by clicking here. All right, now it's centered and make a deselection now by pressing Command D or Strike D or just go up here to select and click deselect, all right. Now we have our basics, and the next thing we do is to add effects or so-called blending options to our layer. And these blending options can be found down here. All right, and the first effect we add is bevel and emboss here. All right, and the style in a bevel can stay like that and change the technique to crystal hard. Okay, and for depth, let's choose 150 and decrease the size to three, okay. Direction up is okay, so soften zero is two, all right. And for shading, uncheck the use global light and check anti-alize to have a smooth glass contour here and change the opacity of the highlight and shadow modes here with first of the highlight mode 80 and for shadow mode 70, all right. And that's it now for bevel and emboss. And the next effect we add is now stroke, and that's here. Okay. First, let's increase the size to, let's say, seven. Let's change the position to inside. Blend mode normal, yes. Opacity 100%, okay. And let's check overprint. And for the fill type, we choose gradient. Here. And now, Click here on the gradient color pattern. And for that, we need a gradient with golden color tones. I have that already here, right? And you see here, there are these different color tones from bright golden tones to darker, right? And click OK. And check reverse and change the style to reflect it and adjust the angle to 30 degrees. And the scale can be increased to maximum, and that's 150 percent. All right. And now 
Let's duplicate this blending option by clicking here on the plus symbol here. All right. Now we have this blending option twice, but the second one we have here now has to be changed. So first, these values can stay like that, seven size, seven pixel size, and change the blend mode to multiply, opacity to 70. And for the gradient, we can use this time a more simple one, like here. It's now red because of foreground colors, red, but just let's change it in black, right? And let's drag and drop this here so that vanishes, all right? And okay, and now we have to undo some of the settings here, and that's unchecking reverse, change the style back to linear, and the angle to 90 degrees. All right, and let's check the other here to have a smoother gradient, which we have forgotten in the previous stroke. So let's go back here and check the other. All right, and now we have to duplicate this stroke again by clicking here, again on the plus symbol, All right? And this time the blend mode has to be changed into linear dodge add, and the gradient has to have more transparency this time, which means you go here, let's create it ourselves. Let me show to you how you can create it. First you drag and drop this here, so we only have white. And these regulators here are controlling the opacity of the colors we choose here. So now we need a gradient where several white gradients appear with 0% opacity between them. So first, let's hold Alt and click and drag and drop this here. All right. Let's move it to the position 25, All right? And here, decrease the opacity to zero. There you go. And now let's do this again here by holding Alt and drag and drop this time to the location 50, as you can see it here, All right? There you go. And now again, hold Alt, this time here you drag and drop this one and drag it to location 75%. There you go. Now we have this gradient here with several opacities here. And that's exactly what we need now. So click OK. And now change the angle to 130 degrees and the scale to 100. All right. And that's it now for the strokes. Now we add an inner shadow that's beneath the stroke here, All right? Blend mode multiply and color black is right. Just increase the opacity to 80%. Uncheck use global light. Distance, let's say seven pixels. Choke, 20%. All right. And the next effect we add is now the gradient overlay that's here. And for that, again, we use a gradient with transparency, as we had before here in this one, where we choose the second one here and change the color to black, All right? And drag and drop this one here, click OK, and check dither, and decrease the opacity to 70%, and decrease the scale to 30%. All right, there you go. And I almost forgot the bevel and emboss also needs a contour here. All right, click here and choose the contour. You, you also should have in your default settings this one here, green double. All right, click anti allies for a smooth contour. All right, there you go. And that's it now for the blending options for this text layer. Let's click OK. All right, and the next thing we do now is to add fill and adjustment layer that interact with the text layer here. And to do that, we first here, I'll drop it here, and go down here to fill and adjustment layer and choose pattern. And now we choose 
a pattern that is quite grungy, like here this one, and decrease the scale to let's say 40, no let's say 30 percent, okay, all right, let's click OK, and change the blending mode to screen. And now we see the pattern goes over here, the goes over the entire document here. Don't worry about that yet. We're going to change that. First, let's add another fill and adjustment layer here and choose gradient. And not surprisingly, we also need a gradient with 0% opacity in it. So let's click here again and change it again, this time not to black, but to white here. Okay. Now let's remove this. All right. Click OK, and let's change the settings to 70% scale, and reverse, and dither. All right, click OK. Now we've created this fill adjustment layer to have a more shiny look on the text effect. Let me show you what I mean with that. First, we have to go now to the, to the ellipse tool here. And first here, let's change it to path. And now let's create a path ellipse by here, dragging here, right here. There you go. And the top of the ellipse should start on the at the end of the first third of the text layer's height. And now let's go up here and click mask. Now you see it has created a mask with the fill and adjustment layer, but we actually want it the other way around. So let's go up here to the path operations and let's choose subtract front shape. All right. And now we select both of these fill layers by holding shift and click this one and right click and create clipping masks. There you go. Now you see the, these layers are now limited on the content of this text layer. But we see now that this shiny look doesn't look very good right now. So let's change it by double clicking here and let's click here, this gradient again, and let's drag and drop the width or the location of this controller. Uh, let's say locations 50%. All right, and there you go. It looks now much better. And now let's click OK. All right, there you go. And that's it. Now we have our Iron Man 3-like text effect. And I hope you enjoyed it and that it helped you to get better in Photoshop. I appreciate likes and comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other tutorial videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.